Hi everyone, I'm Jacob. I am a software engineer at Blazity. In this video, we'll explore how to master image placeholders in Next.js. Default image loading causes layout shift, poor core web vitals, and a bad user experience. Image placeholders solve this by providing visual feedback during loading, preventing CLS and improving perceived loading performance. I am very excited, so let's jump to code. I prepared this uh, very simple Next.js image gallery with only one image for now. We are using a component called default blur image. And so let's see the implementation. We have some wrapper and then we are using a image component from Next.js. As you can see, a placeholder is set to empty now. And uh, this is the default value for this prop. And we can easily uh, check how it works by refreshing the page. Uh, as you can see before uh, image appears, we can see the blank space here. So uh, this is not the best user experience, uh, but we can easily make it smoother by changing placeholder to blur. And right now, Next.js automatically generates a blur placeholder for this image. So let's refresh it again. And we can see this very cool uh, blur effect, but it works only for uh, static images, which means we need to import it uh, in our, uh, in our application, in our component. But what if, for example, we are using some CMS or uh, other third-party provider, uh, we need to uh, set something called blur data URL. But how to get this uh, URL? We can easily do it with library called placeholder. But before we start, it requires some configurations. First, we need to install these two packages, placeholder and Next.js plugin. So we can hit enter. And when it's done, we also need to set it up in our Next.js config by importing it like here with placeholder and then export the default with placeholder. Okay, that's cool. And right now we can uh, create other component called dynamic blur image. But TSX, uh, we can actually copy the previous component and paste it here and change the namings. Also, a source needs to be a string, so we can delete it. So um, right now, our function needs to be marked as an async in order to get this data. So first, we need to get the buffer. So you basically fetch the image data on a server side, and then we can use the getPlaceholder function to basically generate a placeholder uh, for our image. So we can put it right here as an uh, blur data URL, base64, uh, okay. So we can hit save. Um, and also I prepared some third-party images in order to use it in our page. So we can import it here in dynamic blur image and use the image that I prepared. So we can hit save and when we uh, run our application again and we refresh the page, awesome. We can see the same lure effect for the dynamic image. What's more, a placeholder library provide us some more. For example, uh, we can use um, the color, the dominant color of an image as a placeholder. Uh, we can achieve it by removing this from here. And then as I mentioned, when we set the placeholder to empty. It basically leaves a blank space for the image, uh, but this is the default, so we can actually uh, remove it and we can um, set the background of our wrapper as this uh, dominant color. So right now, when we refresh the page, we can see the dominant color as a placeholder for our image. And that's how you can improve your perceived loading speed and user experience with placeholders. If you want to take your Next.js performance skills even further, check out the expert guide to Next.js performance optimization. It's packed with actionable tips and best practices. You can download it for free from Blazity. The link is in the comment below. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe this channel and see you in the next one.